Hello, welcome to Flow with Mildred. Today, we will be discussing how did I get here and what is my way out? <laughs> now, I'll be talking about my story, some aspects of my life story. Um, and in particular, I'll be talking about some dreams that were actually representing what I was going through. And they were, they, it was a reoccurring dream. And um, what I felt God ended up revealing to me and what I've been doing to, over the years to get myself back in alignment. At first, I, was, I would say I, I got saved in my younger years. I could remember the day quite clearly. Don't ask me my age. I, I'm not good with dates. <laughs> but I remember the day and I remember the age range because the Sunday school class was the class that was between 10 to 12, the 10 to 12 year olds. And I remember the message. It, this, the lesson was about the love of God. And particularly, they were focusing on, there were two persons teaching that day. They were focusing on the light of the world. And I remember as they spoke about the love of God, I was drawn in. Now, in my childhood, I was the quiet child and I, I had the weird stare. And I didn't smile much. <laughs> so I, I probably was scaring them, but it's just that their words were really sinking into me. <laughs> And that day when I said the prayer of salvation, let me tell you, I felt so much love. I felt embracing God's love. I remember when I opened my eyes, as if the light shone behind me, from behind me. I was actually sitting against the window. The light shone behind me into the room. And the whole place just seemed so much brighter. Now, I had been to the altar before and said the sinner's prayer before that day. But it was because, you know, my pastor was really good at preaching hellfire and brimstone messages. And I remember there were times when it's like I, I was a boy. I had quite an imagination. So I would feel the fire and I would hear the shouts and I would see the worms that died not. And I would hear, the, I would get scared and I would run to the altar. And I think God wanted me to know, to draw me to him, to know how much he loved me. It made such a difference. I was never, after that day, I was never uncertain that I was a child of God. I had developed this kind of confidence that regardless of what was going on in my childhood, no matter what was going on around me, the chaos, confusion, I had a certain type of confidence that God loved me and he was with me. He would provide for me. Things will work out all right. Since way back, I had that confidence. And I can recall when I finished my A-levels, like, I sat one day in the living room, I'm like, I prayed, and I told my father, I, I'm not ready to go out in the work world, <laughs> working world. I was, I, I couldn't say I was shy, then I'd worked on that, um, but I was very reserved, very, very, very reserved. So most people, because I didn't speak much, most people assumed I was shy, but I, I was a weird child, and I could remember sitting myself down and deciding I was not going to be shy anymore. And I decided one thing, one of the things I was going to do was when people speak to me, instead of look down, look at, I was going to teach myself to look directly in people's eye and listen to what they're saying. <laughs> and I had mastered that. But side note, the eyes really are the window to the soul, you know. And when you have an empathetic heart, it's a bit of a danger being able to read. Because sometimes somebody is being evil to you, but you can read like they're hurt or stuff and you, you're, you're being compassionate and they're trying to destroy you. True story, real thing, but that's not why we're here today. <laughs> so I was very reserved and I felt I wasn't ready to go out there. And I prayed and I asked God for scholarship. Literally, with the same day, I got a call and I got a scholarship. I ended up in radiography. So guess what? Reserved or not. <laughs> First of all, the science aspect, the technology, that was my thing. But I had to step it up. Because when you're dealing with patients, every day you can meet a new person. So reserved or not, it was time. It was time to grow. And I really, I really, it, it, it really was my thing. And I came back. Oh, my country was going through a volcanic crisis. We had lost the hospital in the, in the capital. So we... We were literally rebuilding, and I was part of that process. 
So it was a lot of exciting times. I ended up dropping in the position of head of department because so many people were, were leaving and so who was there before they had left and there I was. <laughs> but that was my life. It was like constantly on the move, constantly God was taking me forward, constantly I was advancing and it was all this confidence that my Abba Father loved me and he will work all things out for me. And that was it. It came to a point, though, where I really sat down and said, God, if, if I stay here, there's, there's, uh, there's so much more. What is the next move? What is it I need to do? And I recall just feeling like I was getting a heavenly download. And I grabbed the sheet of paper and I wrote out a plan to expand to get an ultrasonography section. Because it was time. We really had to start with the basics. Like, we had all that before, but we had to start with the basics and start all over. So it was like building time. And I made a proposal. And... Um, Sorry, my, my dog is having a moment and I'm hearing. <laughs> He's whimpering. I'm sorry about that. So I made a proposal and it involved in the proposal was that I was going to need a scholarship to further my training, my education. And you know what? You know what? In the end, I was offered two. <laughs> I was offered two and the... Um, the and I got accepted to do my master's in ultrasonography. My life just definitely was on a very fast track. And I ended up giving it all up because I had a conversation with someone. And I guess they felt, they, well, not guess, based on the words I recall, they, they felt they knew me more than I knew myself and more than God, my maker knew me. And, I cannot point a finger to them because I should have known better. I was the one who knew my father. I was the one who had this relationship with him all along. I knew, he was, I knew his voice, how he spoke to me, even, even in my younger years. But I listened to that person and I felt maybe, maybe, maybe they were speaking from God and you know, just listening to them was actually obedience to God. That's what I assumed. Fast forward many years later, it's as if I woke up out of a fog. I wondered, what, what, what wind blew me here? What, what is this? <laughs> but all along, between that time, from that time to, to when I finally came to myself, I kept having this reoccurring dream, like, like it, was, it was several times. And I would dream that I would be digging in the ground, and then I would reach this trap door. When I opened the door, there would be, like, the most beautiful sweet potatoes. Beautiful. And I would turn, and I would call... Someone, ironically, the same person who spoke me out, taught me out, <laughs> who taught me out of, of God's plan for me. I would call them and they were all excited and they would come. And as soon as they stood there, the sweet potato would just get infested with worms. And I looked at it and I would start crying and I would wake up. And I am going to tell you, pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention, especially when they're reoccurring. God is trying to show you something, tell you something. Um, I know some people say, well, negative dreams are from the devil. Not all. Because remember Pharaoh's dream. It was a good thing that they knew about that. So that Joseph was able to interpret and they were able to deal with the matter. So that even though the famine was going to come, guess what? They were ready and they were prepared. It took a while before I, 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 I felt from the word go, I understood somewhat what the dream meant. But I kept praying about it. And then I had to really, when I finally came to myself and was looking at my life, thinking about all the things I tried and just how it just felt like my life just shifted trajectory since that time. And that I would try many things. I, I was always entrepreneurial and it was seen as if, wait, this is a great idea. And it was launch off and I'm going. And then once you start being known, then everything would just like fall apart. It, it was and I could say many things I've done, I look back and I'm like, wow, I did that. But then it fell apart. <laughs> and I, um, I'm telling you, <laughs> when I really started understanding the dream, I, I, and another thing that God used to, he had, he had already revealed it, but I started listening to Kevin Ewing in 2018. And when he started speaking about certain dreams and how you deal with dreams, it, it really backed up what I felt God was telling me. 
And I literally realized that it really didn't matter who may have done what. I opened the door because the curse causeless cannot alight. And how did I open the door? God gave me instructions. I was going through with his instructions. And what happened? I listened to another voice. And in doing so, even though what they said seemed, okay, it's the right thing for me to do. It wasn't truth. Just at the Garden of Eden, I mean, Adam and Eve had it real good. Don't you think so? Real, real good. And she listened to a voice and changed the entire trajectory of humanity. I listened to a voice and I could tell you it changed my life. Changed my life completely. But in, it was a year, I have a tendency some years to like pray, God, what's your word for me this year? And one year the word was restoration and recompense. And there was another R. <laughs> I don't remember which one. But it was, I do remember restoration and recompense. And Joel 2, 25 was the verse that God gave me. And it's, it's, it's well known. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. The crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God. Who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God. And there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. My people shall never be put to shame. And I like making that into an affirmation. That I trust in the Lord and I shall never be put to shame. So when shame starts coming my way, I know I have to step back <laughs> and speak out. I trust in the Lord. And I will not accept you. But that's, that's for another video. Um, in other translation, he said the, the, um, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, the grasshopper. Some, some, some have different things, in, in not just the swarming locust. And um, I understood this verse. I understood it. And I really felt that this, that word that was given to me had something to do with relation to the dream that I kept seeing. And, but there was a part of the verse that in all the, the excitement, God will restore. There was a part of the verse that really helped me piece my story together and take ownership of where I was. And it says, my great army, which I sent among you. Who sent it? Who sent all those palmer worm, canker worm, locusts? Who? God sent it. Good God Almighty? <laughs> the question was why? Why did he send it? And if you read, read the entire chapter, or read the entire book of Joel, you realize that the Israelites had, you can guess, turned from God, and they were receiving the consequences. And God did not hold back in stating, my great army which I sent among you. And I looked at my life and I realized, I was the one who chose not to see. This is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and add no sorrow. This is leading you away from it. Choose wisely. <laughs> if you today are in a situation where you're literally looking around you and you're like, how did I end up here? If you today right now, you just find your mind is in a whole lot of confusion and brain fog. There could be many reasons. And I've spoken a lot about spiritual warfare. And to me, it's still all spiritual warfare. Life is spiritual, and the fact that I was seeing that in the dream was re relaying to me that these things were happening in the spirit realm already, and then they start manifesting in my life. I started some good things. But it's just like they just kept getting eaten away. I even started doing my master's in another subject. I, I was doing it in business and management, and I stopped at a postgraduate certificate in business and management. It's as if I, I suddenly, my, who I was was changed. I would start and I would never really finish. I was so fortunate that that university allowed you to stop at a certain point and I, I got a certification. I got my postgrad certificate because I would have missed out. I would have lost out. I would have started and then have nothing. And a lot of the stuff I started turned out like that. I started certain businesses and ended up with nothing. <laughs> it's like, well, how could it be? This is so good. What, what, what? 
it was a curse, but a curse caused this cannot to lie. But this type of curse, it was one that I made a decision and it threw me totally out of alignment with what God had for me, what was the best for me, what I was really created to do. Literally, I always love science. <laughs> I didn't want to be a doctor because I, I was shying away from it. But once I got into radio, it's like I found my, I found my niche. <laughs> I found my niche and I walked away from it all. And I paid a high price. But if, you, if you're finding, you're questioning, what is going on here? Or maybe you never even felt like you knew what you were created to be or to do. But you're at the point where you realize, this cannot be it. I have heard about God. I read about God. I believe in God. And my life is definitely not showing the blessings of the Lord that makes rich and add no sorrow. Something is wrong. Now, even with that verse, I know that um, Jesus said tribulations in this world, you have tribulation, but he has already overcome. So I know even when things happen, there was going to be this sort of kind of, you know, you're going to go through it. God is with you. But my life was like, no, this is more than that. And I know some, sometimes we like to say when things are going, oh, this is God is just testing me. And he's telling me my grace is sufficient for you. And my strength is made perfect in your weakness because Paul said that. But I want to remind you. And if you read what Paul said, he mentioned that he, he had a messenger of Satan sent above buffet him, but he sought the Lord three times about the matter. Then God told him, my grace is sufficient for you and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So if you're going through something and God really reveals that as your answer, because you know you went and you seek him about it, then fine. But don't just let somebody throw that on you and you think that's the answer. You may actually miss the very answer that God has to you to resolve the situation. So how do you realign yourself with God's best for you? How do you realign yourself? I, I can never go back and be that. But how, 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 how did I move forward? How did I come to myself? Well, the first thing is acknowledging, yo, <laughs> um, mm -mm, this can't be it. No, no. I, I literally, I, I, I had a year where God just kept saying, I kept hearing the verse in my head. Remember from whence thou was fallen and repent. But I'm saying to myself, but I'm living for you. I'm still doing. Remember from whence thou was fallen and repent. And it took a while before I actually went back and remembered that decision I made. And I remembered how different my life was. And I was able to compare the two portions and periods of time. We all go through something, but there was such a stark difference. I knew, okay, something's very off here. I remembered and I repented indeed because I repented that. God, you, you gave me that download. You answered my prayer. You worked a miracle for me to be moving so fast. And then I gave it up. I listened to another voice. In effect, I made that person an idol. I made them greater than the voice of God in my life. Although I, I had the excuse that maybe they were, they got a message from God for real. Listen, it is good to listen to wise counsel. But even with a wise counselor, Get yourself before God and ask him to confirm it. Make sure you know that this God really speaking through, the people speaking to you. You hear me speaking to you? Anything I say, you go and pray about it. Make sure it is really for you, even if it resonates with you. God loves you. And he, he wants the best for you. But remember, God loved Eve. And there was still an enemy that came and made it sound so sweet that God did not really want the best. God loved me. And I, I, knew, I knew that love. I knew that love. And I still listen to a contrary voice. And man, did I pay <laughs> a price for that. And if, if, if you ever come to my country and you ask about me, I think one of the things that became known, I did a lot of things quietly. I love children and I've helped a lot of children quietly in, in terms of they seem to be failing. They were called slow. <laughs> From those I helped, it turns out they never really were slow. Um, but that's another story. And so I would do that. And then something happened. I was in a grouping and I ended up, my, my passion for children showed up. <laughs> if, you, if you come against a child who's under my watch, um, then you will see a different side of me completely. <laughs> I have that passion for children. And, and one of the things I know, this, I'm not here to speak to children, but I know many who listen may be young, much younger than I am. I'm passionate that you don't make that same mistake. You, you, don't, you don't make that same mistake and waste years of your life. Have it been eaten away. That dream represented the burying of my destiny. It was a good thing. It was a beautiful thing. And yes, 
yes, that voice that spoke to me, that person who spoke to me, it was a real person. Yes, um, from things that I know, they could have been involved in literally burying my destiny via some occultic means. They could have, from what I know. No. <laughs> what I know now. But the important thing was, there was an open door. A choice was made, and it was made by me. So first, I have to acknowledge, listen, this is definitely not what I believe you have for me, Father. I had to come back to the knowledge of God's love. I, I could tell you there was a time that I, I hit rock bottom, and God literally picked me up and reminded me of his love. Reminded me of the day of salvation. Reminded me to turn back to my first love. That relationship we once had. On the outside, I seemed like I was, I was, in, I was doing all the right things at the church. And so. so it didn't seem like it was any gross sin at that point. But you know what? Disobedience is disobedience. No matter what. Disobedience is disobedience. And I chose to walk away from my destiny. So I acknowledge the state of the situation. I'm like, no, this, is, this definitely cannot be where you wanted me to be at this time of my life. And when he, he, he allowed me to look back, I'm like, and if I had followed that path, I knew where I would have been. Then return to your God. And I spoke about that just now. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It's God's love that draws us to him to say, okay, <laughs> I did wrong. He loves us. He's not going to beat us with a stick because of it no we may pay the consequences but it's his love, love that draws us to him so that we can get out of the situation that we can get things right we can make amends then look into your heart i've had to ask myself because sometimes we, we look more only at like spiritual this and spiritual that mm -mm. i had to ask myself why did i why, why did i listen to that country voice what what was in me? What was missing in me? I knew God's love so much. I had that confidence. What was missing in me? What was broken that I didn't realize led to an open door of listening to the wrong words? What was it? Was it even just the pride of thinking? What was it? So I had to sit down and really flesh that out. So that, you know what? I reduced the chance of that happening again because that, like, yo... I'm, I'm too old for that mess now. <laughs> and I know, I, I know, I'm a person who believes in really checking myself because as a human being, we, we are, we're born with the sin nature. You got to know yourself so you don't fall into the same trap over and over again. The devil will try the same, same stuff and all. He will come a different way. <laughs> so you look into your heart and you see what, what caused you to, to make that decision? What caused you to, to, to not listen to? What caused you to fall away? What was it? What was missing? Were you doubting God because there was some death and, and you started saying, God, if you, like, like um, it, it, well, either Mary or Martha said, God, if you were been here, my brother would not have died. I think it was Martha. If you were been here and you, you are harboring this kind of a, oh, church hurt and you, you, you were viewing all the leaders in church as if they were gods and therefore, you know, turning away from the true and living God. Check yourself. I've had, I had to do that. I had to really sit down and had a little hmm, moment. Turn the sword on myself moment. <laughs> and you deal with that matter. You repent. If it's a broken place, you realize it's a broken place and you, you turn to God and you repent and you, you allow him to fill you. It is written, a bruised reed I will not quench and a smoldering, no. A bruised reed I will not break and a smoldering flax I will not quench. And I don't remember the last line, but that, that verse was my verse for one year because my word was victory. And the last line have something about victory. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> See, I, I, I can't quote them all. <laughs> but it's true. If you're bruised, God, God will not break you down when you turn to him. If you if you're, if you're like your, your fire is quenching because of what you've been through, God is not going to pour on some, some water to, to turn you totally off. You turn to him and he will heal you. He, he's a God who heals the broken heart and he binds up their wounds. And I could tell you, he does. He does. So in that, I also had to remind myself of who God really is. I literally took some time to remind myself how much God loves me and how much he cares about me and who he is. Yes, he would allow consequences. I, I couldn't shy away from that. But he loves me. And what he's willing, his plans for me are plans of good, not of evil. I had to go back to, to Jesus and how Jesus revealed the Father to us. I had to go back to, to, to 
Romans, where he said, what shall separate us from the love of God? I had to go back. We're blessed with our blessings, spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. I had to go back that, that Christ took the curse for us on the tree, became a curse for us, that the blessings of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles. I had to go back and remind myself that the blessings of the Lord make rich and he has no sorrow. He is willing. God is not willing that any should perish, that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. I had to go back and find out what, 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 who, who is my father? And what is it like? I had to go back to that verse that said, um, if your son asks you for a fish, would you, give, would you give him a serpent? If he asks you for an egg, would you give him a stone? And it says, if ye being evil, know to give good gifts unto your children, how much more would the Heavenly Father give good things to those who ask? Now, you know when the verse is popping and I quote, I may not, I'm not good with the references. So every now and then I may remember a reference offhand, but I will find them. I will go to the video, find the verses, and I will put the references in below so that you can, in the description, so you can go through them yourself. It's important that you check for yourself. But if we being evil know to give good gifts to our children, how much more would Heavenly Father give good things to those who ask? Ask, and he shall receive. Seek, and he shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. Ask, that you may receive, that your joy may be full. All those beautiful things. All those beautiful things. I had to remind myself. So I'm telling you today, remind yourself of who God really is. Even if it just seems like nothing will go on. <laughs> what is this? Even if it seems like you've been praying, you've been fasting. You mean, yeah, I had those. Yeah, I had those days. I, I still have them at times where it would appear that I didn't get the answer. I think I spoke about it in another video. I pray. I fast. Oh, God, I need this now. And it seemed like it didn't come through for me. But at the end of it all, be in expectation. After you remind yourself who your father is, expect him to come through. Because believe me, child of God, he is willing and able. Don't blame, forgive the person who may, be, who may have led you astray. Release them. Release them. If, they, if, if, they, if it was in a really evil thing that hurt you and wounded you and they will not say that they're sorry, release them. That's the only kind of forgiveness you can give. And I'm not going to tell you it's easy. Sometimes you really have to fight to let go. Sometimes you have to tell God, oh, God, no, -uh. I can't believe that. You, you just have to be honest, open, and fight to let it go. Let God take over. Tell him you remember vengeance is his. <laughs> but let it go. There's a verse that said, um, my reverend, avenge not yourself. Avenge not yourself, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. So, so take it to God. But then check yourself. Take responsibility for your part in the matter. Where did I go wrong? And if you can see where, then why did I do that? <laughs> Sometimes it's just always in nature. Yeah, but still, you need to know. What was in my heart? Um, the, Jesus says that um, it, what comes out of a man that defiles a man. What, what, what was in me? Today I'm telling you, if you feel that you have been blown away, first of all, if you're still young, and right now this video might come at a time where you're actually listening to someone telling you something and it may not be of God, it may not be for your best, I would warn you, please, go before God in prayer and let him direct you. Let him shield you. I pray right now, God, shield anyone who's listening to the wrong voice. Unplug their ears from, from, from the lies and let truth be spoken to them. I'm telling you, I won't want you waking up and realize I can never get that back again. It's gone. I remember that scene, that verse we said about Esau, when he saw his birthright and he repented with bitter tears. It's in Hebrew somewhere, I'll find it, you know. And I put it below. That verse convicted me. Because I knew. I knew what I gave up. I came to myself. And in order to now get my life back in alignment, because I think you, I may not be able to do that again, what I was heading to and what I wanted to do. But the blessings of the Lord is such that the tangible thing is that God can give you purpose again. God can restore even the wealth that you could have had, the influence, the lives you could have touched. Those 
may never come back again, but he can put you back in, in alignment with being that type of person, maybe in another field, in another way. So if, if you feel like you've been blown away, hopefully it's not too, too far gone, please acknowledge the situation. Return to your God. He loves you. Look into your heart and find out what, what, what really made you make the decision. Don't, don't shift it to the person. Don't blame shift. Take ownership. It's your life. Take ownership. You can make a difference in it going forward. Not that person. They may not be willing. They may not ever tell you their story. They may be going on living their best life. And that really did happen to me. <laughs> it's like, I just applaud them. They, they're living their dreams, literally. Whereas mine was demolished. And I could tell you, and on top of that, I literally spoke their dream into their life when they were scared about something. I literally encouraged them and now they, they, they just took off. <laughs> yes. And I can smile because I know I have to come to myself because I want to have my take off moment not being hindered again. <laughs> Deal with the matter of your heart though. If, if it's that you felt that you were looking at that person's validation or love, deal with the matter. Deal with the matter. Believe me, God created you and you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You are loved. And he knows what's best for you. You are loved. Was it that you were lonely and the voice just made you feel like this? Oh, somebody's with me. Hmm. Yeah, I know that feeling. But once again, I'm going to remind you, you are loved. So, be an expectation. After you remind yourself who your father really is, and pray to him. Ask him for what you want now. Ask him for restoration. Those verses are so beautiful. I will restore to you the years that the Swami Locust has eaten. And there's a story in Kings, I don't remember his first or second Kings, that I really love. Where the widow who, well, she was a widow now, she had a son. It was a woman who, who Elijah, one of the, Elijah or Elisha. <laughs> okay. You know I wasn't prepared with that story. But she had returned from, um, Sorry, there's a helicopter. She had returned from... There was a famine in the land, and she, she, had, she was told by the prophet to leave, and she had returned with her son. And when she returned before the king to petition for her land, Gehazi was having a conversation with the king, and the king was asking him about it, the prophet. And Gehazi was telling the king about the very story with, when that woman got the child, and the child had died. And, and he turned and said, there is a woman. And the king restored not only her property... But I think they were supposed to pay her everything she would have gained had she stayed in the land. And I mean, that is such a beautiful story. And I believe God can do that for his children. He could do that for me. He could do it for you. He can restore that kind of way. But you're going to have to do it his way. You're going to have to acknowledge your part and portion so that you don't make that mistake again. Be an expectation. God loves you. And I love you. And I pray today that you will receive restoration. And even the thing that I just outlined in Joel chapter 2, 12, a bit higher up, <laughs> there's some beautiful verses that says, Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. And yo, boy, I've had enough weeping and mourning. That, that part in the dream about me breaking down and crying, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it happened for real, real. With fasting, with weeping, with mourning, so rend your heart. And not your garments. You see, when they fasted back in those days, one of the signs of their penitence or the, or the real intensity they would rip their clothes, their garments. So God would say, no, let, let your heart be, be open before me. Let, let that be what you tear apart before me. You know? Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. And he relents from doing harm. Oh, that's that's a, that's a wonderful God. That's a loving God. He's just. So the harm may come if we do our own thing. But he will relent. He will relent. Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him. I pray that God leaves a blessing in your life. And if you feel that you have been blown away <laughs> from where you should have been, I feel you. I know how you feel. But trust me, God does restore. He does make all things new. 
And I pray you will just be able to bask in his newness. And want to testify, look what the Lord have done. I have been restored. Thank you so much for listening this far. God bless you. Bye.